Hello, my fellow readers. This is I, Dark Symphony 777, with my good friend, Agent X. Hello there. Hi. And we wanted to talk about a video we actually been wanting to talk about for actually for months. Yeah, months, right? Oh. And I pitched, I pitched the idea to you, and it, and you were like, I don't want to do. It. You do it by yourself, and I was like, No, I want you with me. <laughs> I want you to do the video I don't with get me. It, <laughs> she didn't get it. But I thought, I wanted to, I managed to finally coer get her to, to agree to help me with the video. Simply because it's, but it's really more fun to do this with someone. Just doing top tens, it's, it's not as fun, but then you take two people doing their own top fives, and then they talk about why to the other person, and it's like, here's why I like this episode. Here's why I like this. And it's like, it sounds more fun on paper. And so I thought, eh. We do I it. mean, yeah, that's why podcasts are a thing. I love podcasts are a thing. Well, I love I love animation in general. Yeah. So I'll pretty much watch anything as long as it's interesting, mm -hmm. like or sounds interesting. And so we're gonna talk about probably one of the best cartoons ever, Codename Kids Next Door. It was released by it was made by Mr. Warburton in about two thousand two thousand one, I believe. I believe... 2003, I'm going to say? Yeah, around, around early 2000s -ish. And it was a phenomenal show. I think in terms of overall quality of characters, uh, design, set pieces, writing, Kids Next Door is probably the best uh, show Cartoon Network's ever developed. Like, in terms of the whole overall package. And so we wanted to do and showcase our top five favorite Codename Kids Network episodes. Now, this is actually pretty hard because... When, we, when I first pitched the idea, it's like, and we both thought, was there, like, any ever bad episodes of Kids Next Door? We had to actually We had a look. We struggled a lot because there were weak episodes, yeah, but there was no outright bad episodes of the show, which made it really, really hard. It's like, it's like Samurai Jack in that instance. Like, there's a lot of really good episodes, but there, you can't, you, you have trouble thinking of, like, really bad episodes. And so Kids Next Door was, like, a, one of those shows, like, it's like, there's, there are okay episodes, they're mediocre episodes, there are weak episodes, but there's no outright bad episodes to get rid of. Well, there's plenty of weird episodes. There's plenty of weird now episodes, but they, were really, but they weren't in. bad. They were actually, they were still pretty good. Even the really weird ones, like, um, Operation Utopia, like the, the, um, the dream thing, where not, Nigel's in the island with all, and everything's perfect. That was a weird episode, but that was still a good episode. The weirdest one was has to be where, um, Tommy... He's in the bathtub, and then there's, like, bathtub pirates. Yeah, that that episode was really weird, but it was still a fun episode. I still I still actually like that episode. So, we're gonna go, like, Agent X, me, me, and then we're, and then we're gonna try and explain why, like, as fast, as much as we can in, like, a short amount of time, why we like that specific episode. Alright. So, let's get started with number 10, ignore... Five, ignore, you mean number, number five for Agent X. All right, well, this one's Operation Cowgirl. This is the first episode that's probably made me get into the show for good. Because, this, believe it or not, this isn't the first time we've had kids' secret agents. We've had teenager secret agents and all that. And usually they always demon demonize the adult. Well, this did something different because this is a person who's clearly an adult and still is a kid at heart. And while, like, night, number one is still skeptical, she still, like, stays uh, by their side, even when, uh... Mr. Wink and Mr. Fib. Yeah. Oh, I always forget their names. Um, yeah, they're pretty forgettable villains. Okay, I didn't know that was just me. I, I know that they're, I was like, Mr. Fink, Mr. Whip, it's just really, yeah. really odd. Yeah, and even when um they were there, she still, like, got on their side. I thought, I thought it was an okay episode. I mean, like, when you have, you have to remember, during, in the beginning of the episode, it was just the five of them, so we didn't have this whole world building. We didn't, we didn't have, have, we didn't have all the world building, we, we only, what, at the time when that episode came, we only had, but like, at outside this, of them, we had, like, like, hints that there was a big organization. And then when you really, really watch the later episodes, you see the character development, because number one is kind of a jerk. Right. In this one, he yeah, he, mellow, a, he mellows out. Sure. Like he 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 like that that which makes uh, Operation Tie no not Operation Tie Operation Not uh, with Musk. Musk was a great character because you know 
Nigel Uno, in that episode, he learned his lesson from, um, Last Last, right? That's her name? I believe her name is yeah. Last Last. So and, you know, he's more wary. I mean, he's still cautious because he's still an adult, but then he, wa- he like, warms up to him, like, really fast. So he learns his lesson from her, which, you know, is a mark of a good character. Well, then you gotta remember, like, with his dad and all, he was still, uh... Yeah, he was still, like, he still he liked his dad. He didn't like his... He didn't, he didn't trust his dad that how bad he was, but then he eventually warmed up Warmed to up, dad. like Operation Oompa. Well, it also shows episode. that that not everything is black and white. We have... Because, because there's not only adult heroes, but later on you find kid, kid villains. villains. Like and that... Creep. That really changes up the show, and I think that's what made it go on as I, long as it did. Yeah, I also like the fact that in this uh, in this show, if you actually paid enough attention, the good the good guys never never always won. It's like they're always like they always made it obvious that they're selfish, and whenever they were selfish, they ended up losing. It's like or like there are other instances where they you know they lo- they end up losing in some way, shape, or form. And you know they don't always treat it as a bad thing. They don't treat the it as a bad end, thing. It it doesn't really hurt anybody. When you really get deep down into it. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's kind of a... That's actually really uh, refreshing. It teaches kids not, that not all adults are bad, and they can still rely on their parents. And I mean, not mine, but... But yeah. but you can still, like, look... You can still, like, um, rely on adults. Yeah. Even when it doesn't seem like you can. Go- going off on a tangent... This was the first... Was this the first episode you saw? No, it was, like, the second or third. Okay. I, I kid you not, the very first episode of Kids Next Door that I saw was Operation Movies. That, that was the episode that, that is known for introducing the toilet. <laughs> that, that's not, that came after this episode. That came after this episode. episode. My very first episode was a season two episode. Okay. And it's just... You're- you're deep. Because they actually... Yeah, you were way late in the game. Yeah, I was way late in the game. But that was the first episode I ever saw of Kids Next Door. And after that, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the... To- <laughs> because of Toyonator. But Toyonator, that's not I even mean, on this list. If you saw the pilot one, it's that it's was good, uh, but that it was, wasn't... That was no pee in the pool. But it wasn't... That's the one where they were going in the pool. Yeah, and with the that one. Swimming. That one had Mr. Blink and Mr. Bit too. That was their first appearance. And that was the, and that poor pilot. That was actually a pretty good pilot. It's it was not a, enough to keep watching. It's not enough to keep watching, but it was still a week. It was still a week episode, but it's like it was still a good pilot. Yeah, it's supposed to keep you watching. It's supposed to keep you watching. It's like here's what we have to offer, and it's like people want, and when and when they did pilot, they actually had two shows. He actually had two shows. The other one was Kenny and the Jump, and well, had Pressel. Professor Triple Echo Large, and nobody cared, nobody cared about that show. Everyone was, I wanted to see the five kids uh, adult tyranny. Oh, I thought that was my, I thought I had a trick, I thought it was dreaming one, but I know, I guess, they were really the bad kids in that, in, about a kid and his monkey. Yeah. Nah, they were, the kids yeah. were more interesting. All right, the then. kids were more interesting. So, I have to, I have to say, I actually really like Cowgirl. That was, this was actually the second episode I saw, too. Because it was back-to-back. Like, it had it yeah. had Operation Movies, which was the episode that only showed it itself. And after that, it had this plus the other episode. Well, as far as I remember, the show began to hit. It this kid, yeah, it, can't, it did. So they were showing everything back to back. Yeah, they so were doing missed, everything If you missed one episode, it didn't matter. So I really I really liked the character of Last of Us. I, I think it, it showed how deep the show would, would be getting. Yeah. Like, as the show went on. Yeah. Because we were like, oh, kids are bad and stuff like that. And we meet lots of lies. And she, and she, she means well. She's kind of a goof. Like, she, she's a little lady who's not, who thinks she's still a kid, but she's, but she, but she wants to prove that she's, like, adults can still have fun. Like, adults can still be kids when they want to. You know, it's sad that that's me right now. <laughs> you right now? Or you're, in 20 you're, years. In 20 years. Alright, so that's your. Number no, five. Yeah. Okay. Here's my number five. My number five. five to make it easier, you know. Yeah, I know. But it's gonna, it's gonna load up. My top five is kicked four. Let me wait for it to load. When it, when people thinking of their, like their best favorite kids store episodes, they they all they always have to put a kicked episode. And oh my god, that is. I think overall, real. overall, I think. Four was the best. 
Caked one was okay. That was that was the episode they introduced with no people. How old are the delightful children? The delightful children are like supposedly like, really old. They supposedly can't really age. I'm surprised they didn't notice that sooner. They can't really age that much. Uh, well, no. Each caked each caked episode is supposed to be a different delightful children's birthday. You never know. Um, no, caked one was eh, it was it was probably it was okay. Not I, really good. I it, actually, it showed its age. Uh, Kick 2 was amazing, because it introduced us to Lizzie. It introduced us to a lot of stuff that comes later. Kick 3, I think, is the weakest of the kicks. So because, for one, it relies too much on the very, on Nigel taking care of a bunch of chicks. Oh, that. And Kick 5, it was actually very close between Kick 4 and Kick 5, because Kick 5 was awesome too. Like, I ha actually had a couple honorable mentions. Operation Movies was one of them. Operation Kicked 5 was one of them. And the third one was Food Fight. I didn't put oh, Food Fight. Yeah, I was this close to putting Food Fight instead of Kicked 4. But I realized it wasn't really a traditional episode because it's really just Grandma Seltham singing, like, two remixes of war songs. <laughs> that's, basically, that's basically the that's, entire episode. Just that the song <laughs> singing as an old lady. Like, uh, in the worst movie, singing two songs. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I think, like, after the first, second time, the kick still for trying to get pretty old. Yeah, but Kick 4 kind of threw out with kind of better. Like, Kick 3 was like, hence why I said Kick 3 was weakest, because it kind of felt repetitive at the time. And then Kick 4 came out and threw everything out of the bar and said, yep, you want to Kick? Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna flip everything you know about the Kick 4. one where they did eat it and they everyone got grossed out when they saw it? That was Kick 3. Oh. Kick, th kick 4 is this big Two racing and oh, okay. number two, okay, number two right. honors father by winning the two, one, winning the win the contests for now. number one. And this is a this is a hokey episode. Like some men, the kids store is a show that have dual character, and so you can actually like throw in like the any of main kids from number one to five in their episode just by themselves. And still a good episode because, you know, they're the best. It's the reason I don't really consider an event villain. And he would show because Ben Grimm is a good character. He is a good character. He, he, it's, it's impossible for him to work to be by himself not at the end of the episode. The few times they have Billy by himself in his own episode, they were bad episodes. They were bad episodes. But you have, like, yeah, like, you next to have my, uh, which is Jake, you have, um, what's the word to not show that, that? Not really. Adventure time, there's Adventure time, and, like, team carriers, so whatever one of them is, like, same thing, and so it's, like, always have carried each other. And I would um, the, the number one's best, because they're most squeaky, they, they have the most knobby. Number one is so Kinda, they were kind of, they were odd, but felt repetitive. Number five, she had herself into Heinrich. Number four is, is he like, is, they did something intro number for trying to, like, make him seem like the metal. And number three, they only had two of about three men. One was, like, weird, because that one didn't even know that one. And the only one was her. Was her uh, doing the warning? I'm like the the uh, the kind of stuff like. But I think it's for like four three episodes. My top five are all those episodes. Oh, is that that much? I like the character and his episodes. So what happens in the four? They do the uh, tube contest, like two bricks, and the winner gets paid. And so we want to win, so, so I said, all right, all my friends, so they, they embrace the gigantic ones. But no, it's really you told my father to actually all the kids in the table and turn the kids' cake. That's, I honestly think that's the darkest this has ever been, because... They're straight up murdering people. They're not trying to think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fix people. Drop and you currently are defying the child's dark. But but I would I would take that over to have a kill. Actually, fuck 
in the other briefcase. <laughs> oh, they did at the time because our fool shit was basically just like, really stupid. No, the laser very brain was just alive. No, but like, I'm gonna kill this. No, you think about it. Uh, this is the most we actually ever get to the kind of bring like, getting back his worry, like, he's really, really hard worry. His father's in the middle of And the end has taken a woman and a duck from Dumbledore. I thought it was a very bittersweet thing because, you know, they kind of don't do so well. You know, Boogie okay, ran right away from the first of all that they really see. And everyone wanted it for so him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> could never was like, aww. I mean, it was a great episode. So, what? I think Kara was a good episode. I mean, I'm sure that the rest will be her. Yeah. I think, I think, I think. having a five, because all the ups I picked were, like, better. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's see your all. Oh, ha 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 He's not really my favorite actor of all of them. I mean, he's not really my favorite either. But just think we're two as the best, like, the same episode. Well, I mean, I'm under one. Even though they're my first, they're so good. Um, so, yeah, the mystery of who's who. Oh, why? Who have no three to get rid of? And then, we go through the most emotional, basically, and getting everybody. What twisted, uh, not no way it works. So, yes, it's relevant enough. I think, no, no, I think this is actually one of the best choices. Is the part where he explains how I yeah. get everything like the, the rhythm of the action. You had a lot of action. Village men in details and man boobs, basically playing with the toy, and then he had old tops down with the hook and back and forth. It went on, um, and I think no one's ex-ass about this. Yes, it really happened. Like, yeah, yeah, I found two years. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be on here. Yeah, it really, it really, it really, it really, it really, This is the sort of thing that I started bumping with me, because I put in this episode. All the characters, all the KVs of Sophie, was about to be solid except for the three. It's kind of, it's like how these four really dimensional characters, and then you have three. It's like, where what is the line? Like, what is the line? So it's like, well, okay, where are we going to go with this time now? And then, you know, they, they complete, they complete, uh, swaths with the operation ends of the other two to like, uh, two twins. And one, and phone number three. And it's like, how am I going to number three? Oh, no. It's a twist. What's it? No way! Um, I do like the sub. I have to sub for the girl. The mother is her in the sub. I don't want to hold his side enough. I was, I think, I think it was a good episode, but I think just, um, it just really like it. Well, funny, I think it could be, um, like, well, well, this Obby loves murder mysteries, or, or not, or what, whatever you want to call it, detect whatever. Yeah. And so, that really shine and it's in the keep and it's And I'm not sure if it's one. It started off like, it, it all started off a mini arc with number and number two. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that could do the end, I, I think. Do you start up in the arc? Yes, so I can't remember. The end one? No, not the big guy one. Um, the end one was second uh, Where Bushi, uh, kind of cast things. I turned to like a shit. It was weird. Yeah. And I really. I mean, I. I actually want this one. This might be a number. It's a really sad or full number one. Number four. Okay. So, what's the number four? So, uh. Bow. A bow operation guy. 
Mother of a full occupant. How are you not disgusting? I really like this person. I really, I, I, yeah, I thought it was really disgusting. Third, what is this? I'm so glad you fall in love with cool character. And, and, and I did not deserve her like on. Neither did I on it. I didn't eat anything like uh, apple corn. I didn't eat plastic bags. Not favorite real. I didn't eat like physically. But there's this thing called Pygon in the school, and so Hokey's running his base of Hunter, a detective, tries to solve the case, and it turns out it's the, um, the most of the scores you did. I mean, it like something, because it did something completely different. Uh, I just, no, it didn't like the presentation. I would I expect Apple the lost on memory, like the... And what all day, like did the grill turns to like we were kind of doing the dance of the film and their iteration. They were all day with the more stuff. I really did I thought so did it. And it was so good very fun. In a very way. It, this was this that got me interested in missing out. Nancy so, was a teacher. Nancy so did not. Nancy got me interested in, uh, in short and novel and novels as a whole. Okay. Yeah. But then guy got me interested in the world. Like, remember uh, to me to go, stuff like that. Because they go very far at, um, anime. <clears throat> but the one you're having me, like, gross out, like, we see, we see him eating a crow. It's like, oh, the crow had the pain. I just want it, I think the most smart part of it is this one. I'm not sure to admit you stick the chocolate sauce that you can eat a montage of her name in it. Yeah, that, that was pretty much fun. Um, but I feel like, where's the dinner room going? First, I, th I thought it was on in a primary ass way. I really like this other. I'm going to some stuff the other episode I can miss. I think there's other updates in the really, really good So that just, just push how good the show got. Like in later seasons, actually got more than a miss. Like, not the first war so that the end doing your that bushy thing of another episode of the guy. The thing that's like season one with the uh, Operation Y. To basically the camera and the more children. The sack kind of the scene for now. But this also, it had. I just thought it was actually. The reason it's number four. The problem had one of the best. Number four. No, it had number four. It had probably the best in the show. Like, like, terms of just writing. I just did by the writing. This is actually number two. Number two or number one. This is just a white six. So I got down to fucking the scene. I got down to the scene. And two, I think, kind of established kind of a... Kind of established a half of kind of... Whenever they did a warning, they kind of went... They tried to kind of... They tried to do this. Like, oh, uh, and then we can do it in my eye. Yeah, that's right. Like, we did it with, with just with Uki. They tried so hard to do it. Like, what? With, with number two, it, it kind of can mess up my eyes. Not that to not out, not to try to remember, like, from the top to, like, I don't remember. I'm on the right. Yeah. Uki. Oh, I'm not smart. I'm the result guy. The result guy is this. Okay. <laughs> I know. In real. Same thing. Okay. Same thing in this episode. Well, I mean, so I this thing in the pretty episode. It was, uh, it was just, it just not meaning, like, in case you could ever want to actually make a cake. I was like, oh. brownies, and then I remember what that to be episode. Yeah. We're like, what? 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 The green pen did, but what about what the hell is this? Oh, no. Alright, and then it's like, you know, he's six. Alright, what, what's her number? Oh, 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 o
pretty interesting to go ahead and on her on her. she into the white closet or before that she was doing things on her own. And this was it's a pretty the first um, non group show. And, and it did not disappoint me in any way. In fact, to this day, I still wonder the full way was. I'm gonna get how I look. Yeah. That's, that's me. I'm just getting better than all. There we are. Oh, we got one. Thank you. I'm pretty favorite. Oh, anyways. Um, so she goes out and tries to find the full way when the white children. Yeah, when she has a cell, and they make the biggest and the big they put in three times. That they call Jimmy's. Which is a dog! Do you want ice cream? Do you want Jimmy's? Well, to be fair, this is Jimmy's what the British call. Yeah, and the, and the letter is British. So I want to go ahead and do what to the British. Uh, what, I'm sorry? For the shoulder? Uh, no, I mean, it's true though, I do die with that. It's pretty, really good scream is on it. But yeah. Hey, boy, what are you doing? I just got like a bit more. I like to put some chocolate sauce on it. Shut up, I just want it to. Listen, if I want to get these with caramel or more, so I'm okay. 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 I'm <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, this is ice cream, right? Oh, no, the flavor. I, I'm, I'm looking here. I really like the soda. Not only did we get a couple really hilarious jokes with these, I thought it was pretty good. Cool. Riddle actually was pretty funny. It's like, uh, what was the goal? Oh, what day you... So, what say you eat cream on? A snack! I thought it was clever. <laughs> it is really. I'm not really clever. Not that she didn't all start the. Um, it was. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that this didn't really happen, right? They kind of did a bag. She actually fought her. So, I heard the fact that kind of shadow Henry's cover. It did, and apparently, when she went to the building, she just she didn't work alone. Or she joined kids more. Not to make number five in a liquid of two. But I think that had one of the most serious the one we got that people who got to go in at first before all the other characters was really d- was really done. Really done. I'm pretty guiding. Uh, I don't... The only reason I had to put this on top of the simple videos I found I just think the episode should be silent and not that or something. But I don't say this out of I just think it was doing something that she would do like that, like that, like that suck. Everything. So, I said, I like this out. I said, the next door didn't really have good episodes. They have a good episode, they have bad episodes. Well, let's see what 993 is. This is your number three. Number my number three was very serious. Simply because this is strange. Okay. But I don't remember. Well, maybe you're so operation. Um, operation is actually two part. Oh, two part. Just like four. Introduces cat named Maurice and Maurice, and he was basically the person shot who actually considered running coming as a. Commit. He, he was the boy. They were actually considering coming in number of that at that time. I chat was still playing girl. No, it was um it was number of it of his supreme member at the time. And chat is a press. And so we were gonna get a cut to most turning thirteen and kind of be deconditioned is when you thought he was a throwing teenager. And so, number five, because 
If she wants to more leaves that much, she doesn't want she doesn't she doesn't want to risk her fighting it. And so she does all the research she went for the teenagers for specific her sort of creep. I have a lot of a lot. Now that she bothers the best thing about shit, I'm giving uh, all these old parole to Pox. Teenagers do what they want and, and do all these different schemes. But, little check, 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 little check, little check, little Instead of pickle, it's really chickens cut out of our skin. What the lot of the devil was cemented? This, my number three, was it. Is it good to tell anyone what the world that means was a word for the kid next to he was just undercover no. And I was like, wait a minute. No. And then in last so we slide off. She was only thinking about it. She was worth the kids for. Had her shit a little peacock, but she but they knew her if she had <laughs> Well, like Bree's telling, just like Doc in the Bible is like, there's something that his next door. I'm sure it's fun so. Like very, very specific birds. Can all about this. The fact um, that, that he's not actively facing her because he said that, you know, you're not supposed to know about this and I, I, I really have to, like, waste some reason. No, but I'm going because I read you that much. It's awful. What was that number five being the commander? Like, revealed in uh, Operation News. She does. She does. And then because the commander, she takes over her job. Um. Uh, but she has draw very good nerves from now on to fight some what they are just so much and turn the entire show on a so what could be undercover and then eventually in like Russian Tree we find out Chaz uh, an undercover member of Splicker Gang uh, and also, also this is also the first inkling pass of what the kids do because because it was this thing that and put it into our minds that had her back and will see herself in the final scene saying, okay, who is Blimp Cell? Who's these guys been for? And then, and then the Glock kids are for them. And the camel for them. Um, I just, I was literally lost in the last Oscar games that really did. But like, no five players for them. Who could he... Like, her having this big character in her and wondering who's really outside of her anymore. Like, with the team to them, it really kind of twists the narrative of his head that, that kind of makes show in her place longer. And I really, really like this episode. I don't think, I think, writing wise, as good as Sky, but I think from overall, overall standpoint, you, it was a better episode. Okay. I mean, I like this pretty much anyone in the world, please. Kind of, you have to use the one character. One character. I think they could, I, I really wanted anyone else to go. Right. And the reason why I didn't, because like, he was more than this, but like that. Yeah, that was one important. It's one shot. Two. And he will mention one show that I moved on from the episode where all the teams were partying in the, uh, the Hutchins house. They mentioned him again, but they show up. Uh, really cool guy. I really like Reese. I really wish we saw him now. He was a great character. Uh, you know, we're done to the number two and one. Let's see, what is... What is one two? Now we go. Why? Why are we doing this? Ah, number two. Alright. This is a... Let me wait. Let me point it to my point. Alright. Alright, we're back. Oh my... Operation... Operation Future. Well, this, this was a great episode. Oh yeah, well, before this episode, it was pretty harmless. You know, uh, petty little fights, fights, kids not getting their way, 
Caked, not, caked for not with caked for notwithstanding, this is probably the darkest episode. If it wasn't for and, caked um, for, this would be the darkest episode. And on top of that, um, no, but nobody, nobody lost. Nobody got really punished or screwed over. Mm-hmm. This changed the whole. Uh, this changed everything about the show, in my eyes, because this because this episode is when number four gets sent to a boarding school. And she is a she-woman man-hater. She wants to turn all the boys into girls. Like, literally, like, th- this is... This and for some reason, number five is affected, even though she is already a girl. Maybe because, oh, because number five's a tomboy. That makes no sense. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> number one has hair, but, like... <laughs> has hair, not- and it was, strangely enough, looks like Lucy from the pool. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't tell me you don't think of it. I just noticed that! <laughs> I don't know, seeing number one as a girl always un- always oh, un- can't, unsettles can't me. Continue the episode. So, okay, so you you just kind of wonder how it's going to end. Because before we know it, everyone's a girl and there's a survivor of boys. Number four is somehow an old bag with a... With a manicure hand for some reason after all that time. So then we find out that number three's granddaughter disguised herself as a boy. And and the purpose was to make boys and girls reunite again. Which is another good thing too. It's like saying, oh well, boys and girls, they don't have to be a certain way. And they don't have to like avoid each other like the, pl- like the plague. Yeah. I really, I, like, like you said with the dark, it's... It's this episode and Cake for it. Those are the two darkest episodes in the entire show. And if it wasn't for the fact that Father flat out was going to murder people, I actually, if it wasn't for how good uh, Cake for it, I think this might have actually had a chance to be my number five. Because I really like, I thought this was a really dark episode. That just like Maurice, it kind of it kind of showed that actions have consequences. That's something that kids so need need to at least discuss. Yeah, this show did not, like, pull punches. It did not pull punches. This it. episode didn't pull punches. And it kind of it kind of showed what happens, um... If I remember right, um, the villain... What was her name? The the boarding... The, I just call her the headmistress. The headmistress was actually kind of... Uh, take that towards throw away feminist. She was basically... She was basically showcasing what happened... When third wave feminists get like literally all the power. Was that did that even occur back in the two thousands? Yeah, third wave feminist uh, feminism started in like the late nineties, oh. and now we're actually in the fourth wave of feminism. Oh. We like the call out culture and meet and hashtag Me Too, which I completely hate. By the anyway, way, anyway, enough about politics. So yeah, yeah. So like, we need boys, we need girls. Nobody's bad, and, like so. Then there's no reason. To yeah. say, uh, there's no reason to say it, so. Yeah, kind of hinting that, uh, also the, uh, the little, little tease at the end with number four saying, hey, I've never, I never got a chance to tell her that, and he's like, we know it's number three. We know it's number three. Never. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was number one. It's number one. <laughs> it's just, it's Lucy number one. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, anything else to say about this episode? I mean... <laughs> This episode is pretty good. Like, this is an episode I'll probably remember when I'm, like, in the... I remember this episode for how dark it was. Is that the only reason? Yeah. And not the fact that, uh, number one has hair and is, like, But now you got me thinking... And the complete now I can't look. what it is. Now I can't look at number... This is a picture of number one without thinking of Lucy from Peanuts. <laughs> no, 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 if you remember, would you like to have a tea party? Yes, I remember. And number four like... <laughs> Well, I would too if I saw a ball. You know what? I just noticed something. Grumpy. Half of your uh, like, part most of your uh, top five are number four episodes. Are they? Yeah, this one. You told me in number one, and that's the number four episode two. And I believe number. Uh, num- my number five well, wasn't a was a was last so last. Yeah. Which is more number one of and no, I'm a sorry, number five well, number four. And uh, my number three was a number five episode. Number three. What about number four? My number four, it was the... Hold up. 
It's a number two episode. Oh. What are you talking oh, about? Oh, never mind. They're all... Your, your top two... Never mind. Your top two are both number four episodes. And? Oh, that's really nice. Yours are mostly number two episodes. Mine's right? a, Speaking of number two, here's another one. <laughs> you gotta take a number two. Oh, for come a on! <sighs> oh, that shit. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. My number two is Operation Dogfight. This this was probably this broke my heart. This was a fun episode. It wasn't a great episode. It wasn't amazing. It was a fun episode. What is this episode about? Basically, um, this episode is basically just uh, number two is out flying one of his flank trucks because he's like a pilot, and then he gets stopped by this guy now called Ace, and yeah. he's constantly taking him down. And number two is like getting frustrated over the whole thing. It's like, I gotta beat this guy. I oh. gotta beat this guy. And it was just seeing number two act this way of of Why does that look happen? so much like number one with hair? Because I think that's the joke. Because <laughs> Ace is number is the number one. Oh, <laughs> and it's basically just and him and Ace constantly go to this guy. This this old guy right here for plane parts and this guy's the bad guy of the whole thing. Because he's kind of he's constantly tired of these two, these two specifically, ordering chili dogs from this guy, go inside the store, asking for plain parts, and then getting chili sauce over the on um, over the counter. It was it's so cheesy and over the top it's that so I just petty. it's so petty. But that's what gave it its, that's what gave this episode its charm because it was so over the top that it was just so much fun. This was the episode that I actually kept coming back to over and over again because it was just that good. It, it wasn't as strong writing wise as Pink Eye, or it didn't it didn't uh, stretch the overall narrative like Maurice did. But this episode was just so much fun. I just kept going back to it. I this was I actually recorded this episode because I loved this episode so much. It was so much fun, and just seeing number two and number one on Ace, <laughs> who said number one, and Ace kind of teaming up at the end. It's like, haha, we're gonna stop, we're gonna stop you from getting. From destroying all the chili dog stands. <laughs> and it was just... It was just so much fun. It's just a genuinely... It's so, like a genuinely entertaining episode. And I had to have at least one entertaining episode in this list. Just... Just overall entertaining. We, what do you think of this episode? It's, uh... I, it's so odd. You just can't help but like it. Yeah. Especially when, like... The, we, we see... Also, the the number of throwbacks to like previous machines, like all like we see all the flying machines Hoagie has actually made in the past getting completely demolished by this guy, by this one guy, and pecans, and it's just complete utter just ridiculousness. All right, then. Number okay, one. number ones. I already know your number one. You don't know my number one. That's because you never told me. Yeah. All right. So no, what could up, it be? Operation Pull. Ooh, check out that sexy. Dude. Another number four <laughs> episode. So what? So I know why. I know that this is your favorite show, but I never figured out. You never told me why. This, you know how like this show could have possibly went wrong, and and it it turned out to be a lot better than than it should have been. Uh-huh. This basically highlights what the show could have been like. It like could have a, not aged... Like a dumpster fire? Yeah, it could have, like, not aged, like... They like, could have aged, uh, like, really badly, and it might might have been mean-spirited against adult and, oh, kids rule, adults rule kind of thing, but no, it's... It was, it was more subtle on its message. Yeah, and not only that, but it shows us that they're not always in the right, despite the fact that they are the heroes and the adults are the bad guys. Well, this kind of, like... Epitomizes that. Philosophy. Yeah, kind of like shows you. Yeah, this is what we could have done, and it and it clearly shows. Like, it's nice to see an alternative verse seeing what it would be like if the kids were bad. They basically like have everyone shaking at their knees. And the scary part about this is, it's not even just the adults that that are afraid of them. It's every other kid besides Sector B. Yeah, and and the least expectant of this to be the mastermind is number four, negative number four. Because we know number four, <laughs> he tried... Number four was an idiot. <laughs> no, he... No, I, I remember this episode because I look back at the episode guide. 
There was an episode where he tried to take over <laughs> as leader. That was, um... The Clam Cannon The Clam Cannon. And he wears his jeans, and he fails spectacularly. It's like, you can't expect this guy to rule anything, and then, bam, twist! It's negative number four. Yeah, but and at the end, you know, number four is still managed to outsmart negative number four, because, yeah, he may Because, be, yeah, he's stupid, but he's brave. Yeah. And you use that against him. Yeah. I thought that, yeah. So that, I mean... So it's really cool to see, like, a different universe of what... What could have been. What could have been, and thank God we did not have that. Thank God. We didn't have that dumpster fire show that never aged well. Instead, we got a pretty cool show that, outside of, like, the, like, one or two episodes only, really. So, like, yeah, so this show, it means my number one, because it opens up your mind to a lot of things. A lot of people do not give this show, this episode, a lot of credit, in my opinion, because this is what, yeah, it shows you an alternate universe, and that's cool and all, but, like, this also shows you that what could have ha- What could have been. Yeah, what it could have been. I thought this was more of an underrated episode. I liked it. I genuinely liked this episode because of what it did with number four, but I just, it kind of flew under the radar for me. It was like, I didn't, I don't, That's because, I personally don't really care about number four as a character. Well, I think another problem was, too, is that they never touched upon this universe again. And I think if they did it, like, one more time, then yeah, it would have, It like, would have been, it would have stuck in people's minds. So I think, like, it had potential. It, and yeah. that's the reason why. It's like, what could have been? More of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can see why it's not your, your number one now. I really, I really get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yep. It, it makes you appreciate the show a lot more. Yeah. When you really, really under like, when you see this kind of thing. Because yeah. this, this changed a lot of how a lot of cartoons work. It, this, it, as so much, my number one. So, as much as people don't want to. It's, it's kind of interesting that it did all the stuff that modern cartoons are doing now before, like, it became a Like, game. a decade before that. Yeah. I'm like, I like, well, Billy and Manny tried to do the same thing, but it failed simply because they made, because of how bad, how butchered they made Mandy. Yeah. That was the, that was the main, that was the main problem I had with Billy and Mandy, because they, they could, they were doing the same thing with Bill, with Kids Next Door a uh, slightly earlier, but then they ruined Mandy's character to the point that she kind of came off as as a Mary Sue, like a flat out Sue character. Mm. That and that really, really ruined the show in my eyes. Especially as I got older and I found out what a Mary Sue is, and I found out, yeah, she's a Mary Sue. So <coughs> before I show my number one, do you have any honorable mentions? Like just episode, just sure, don't have to go um, into this, don't have to go into explanation. Just any honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Well, if I did had to pick one. It would have to be the dentist one. The one that introduced Night Brace. Yeah, Night Brace. That was a good episode. Because, like, even <laughs> as a kid, I was always, like, afraid of, like... I was always, like, wanting good teeth. And I I kind of, like, felt a little bad for him. But even I thought that was too extreme for how far he was going. Yeah. It also did, the, like, the good the good adult thing, I think, an episode before last episode. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, it's the candy guy that's the bad guy. And it's the actual dentist that was the good guy. Yeah. That, that's another reason why I, I liked it, because, you know, no, the dentists are bad. They just don't want you to, like, they just don't, teeth right away. They just don't want you know, it's like, hey, you clean your teeth. Hey, you, you, you don't have to eat candy. Don't eat pudding for the rest of your life. So, my number one, Operation Grown Up. The episode, the episode that introduced Father. This did so many things to not only kids, like, the overall picture of Kids Next Door, but cartoons as a whole. Because, if I remember, Kids Next Door yeah. was the first, as, as far as I remember, was the first cartoon to have a wider story arc. And this could be traced down to, like, season one of Kids Next Door, ending with Operation Grown Up. So, basically, in order to talk about this episode, we have to talk about two, uh, about three other episodes. Episode oh, The yeah. Fly, The Fly episode, there was another. Ch- there was another episode that had this like this grown up in a baby's body, kind of doing this TV stuff, oh, and God. um the i and the ice cream episode. He was foreshadowed as early as Operation Ice Cream. Oh yeah, he was like he. You heard him, right? Yeah. And he lost it when they failed. Yeah, when they failed and everything. 
And so we kind of knew that he. We kind of knew that the kid, that the delightful children had someone behind them. We just didn't know and who it was. That, but this guy was fucking scary. And yeah. This, this pretty much confirms that. And that and uh, and also con- again confirmed that this is something cartoons never really did at the time, and that was create an actual story arc in a season. Like nowadays, we see like every every single cartoon. Do like at least own its own self-contained story oh arc. Kids Next Door did it before any of those, as far as I remember. Yeah. I think maybe, I think maybe Pop, Pop, Powerpuff Girls probably did it earlier. I can't no, remember. Not, not very really, long. Not no, they very usually long. Did two or three episodes. Two or three episodes. That, but that was mostly with him. Yeah. And but this one did like every single season. It kind of had a greater arc, uh, narrative arc that kind of fed into the overall. Story across all six seasons, ending with Operation yeah, Interviews. Yeah, it was building up to, It like, was building up to Interviews, which, uh, uh, going off topic, Interviews was a very weak finale. It was a, it was a good episode, but for finale, it, it was very weak. I think it probably would have been better if, if, uh, Warburton actually got the Galact- the sequel off the ground. I agree. I don't care if Netflix gives it. It, it needs, I don't care. It needs it the needs finale to be, it deserves. It, it needs the finale it deserves. Well, so, you know, it's really funny. Like, when you really stop and really think about this show, it it, there, it does not get enough credit even now. Yeah, it's... Now, I, nowadays, Kids Next Door is often regard, regarded as kind of a cult, cult classic, oddly enough. Despite the fact it did so much revolutionary stuff at the time, it perfect it perfected like the the hero uh, hero uh, antagonist. With like sometimes the hero, the kids next door are not exactly the good guys in the episode. Uh, it created the whole idea of cartoons having their own story arc in a season, like like regular show, Adventure Time, literally Steven Universe. Like oh yeah, they, this show Steven Universe really cool. is basically just a watered down version of Kids Next Door. That's not a that's not a like, my niece did see this, and she said that, that Steven Universe is basically a weaker version of how the show is. How the show is. And the fact that this show, now, to this day, doesn't really get enough credit kind of really hurts me, because I still... This is still an amazing show. So... I think the reason why is because, one, it's it's not very, like, bright and colorful. Yeah. Which might turn a lot of kids off at the time, or at least not stick as well. Yeah. And another reason, I think it might have been a little too adult at some places. So it like, might, so like the op- messages might have like, like future flew past and a lot of kids. And if you really stop and think about it from an adult perspective, it, it's easier to see it now. What they were, what the what they were trying they to were do. Trying to across. Yeah. So I think like overall, it was a little too grown up and complex for some people. For some people, yeah. So that could have been why I think if they did simplify it, which I hope they don't do reboot for that reason. No. I think it might ironically because it we don't we don't want we don't want it, it to go original. down Powerpuff of Girls twenty sixteen. Well, not only that, you, you can kind of see how this show could go wrong. Yeah, like if they do a reboot Four. with how the direction they're going, it's gonna be all negative number kids next door. Yeah, we want it. So the episode actually starts with. Uh, father's still in the shadows, and the kids and the delightful children are, like, begging. It's like, give us one more chance. And it's like, alright, here's the incredibly dangerous machine for you. Beat him up. They just... The the kids next... Sector V actually get their asses whooped by the delightful children. They lose their treehouse, and then Nigel Uno turns into an... They use the cigar from the baby... the, The TV episode. Turn Nigel Uno into an adult. I'm like... And it does so... It just did everything differently. Like, how it's set up. It's like, this is actual, like, number one, actually giving up. Like, the moment it's like... Like, I'm an adult. I, I have to work. I have to get a job. I have to this. And it's like... And the other guys and the other members of Sector V not giving up. And this also... also uh, this also foreshadows that number five, you know, she's going to get her own story. Like, this episode actually kind of foreshadows that as well as... Uh, Operation Ice Cream, because, you know, she immediately takes charge, she immediately, every, um, and they find him, uh, then they go after number one, find he works, he's an ice cream man now, and they said, you know, we have to stop, we have to help you, like, you know, nobody's a kid forever, we understand that nobody's gonna, we're not gonna, we're gonna grow up. For God's sakes, I'm closer to 25 than 20. Yeah. I'm closer to 25 I'm 26. I'm 26. 
Um, you know, they, they even acknowledge the fact that, you know, we're going to grow up. We're going to have, we're sooner or later, we're going to be separated, but we, but we want to, we want to make the most of it now. And that's another reason why I did like how they, how they portray the adult characters. Cause it also, it also gives you that message. Like just because you're an adult doesn't mean you have to stop liking the things you did as a kid. Yeah. And Which then, is what, what a lot of um, oh, modern kids cartoons don't do any nowadays. Which is not a really good thing. Now it's like, it's either like edgy adult gross out humor or it's like, um, it's, to like be, con- it's like patronizing kid dumbness. It's, it's either one, it's either gross out humor, like with, like with... Is that Pickles the pick, show? The Pickles show. What Pickles show? You mean Rick and Morty? No, no. no it's like Mr. Pickles. About, it's about oh. a dog or whatever. On a oh, oh, yeah. No, I, I know what you're talking about now. It's either gross out humor, uh, patronizing to... it, Patronizing to to kids or other other things. Teen or, Times Go. Like Teen Times Go. Or they're trying to be too overly complicated for their own good. Steven. Like Steven Universe. And I guess you can kind of throw in Rick and Morty... Rick and Morty is kind of a gray area because it does it does ha- it does do like parts like the overall story narrative right like Kids Next Door did, but they kind of do it in a patriot patronizing way. I don't know. I don't. I don't really like it. Like I'm like yeah, back to the future plan. I think that- Rick and Morty was like a very gray. Area. It's like a very gray area in that regards. It's still. It's. I still think it's a good show, but I just think it's. I think it's overrated. I think yeah, I, Rick and Morty's overrated. Like, like I can see why people like it, but I don't think it deserves like the fame that it did. Yeah. Give some, give like half of that to get I think may, I think maybe because it's, it was, it was such, such a refresh, it was more of a subtle adult thing. And it was such a refre- uh, a refreshing taste at the time when it was introduced, where everything was like overly saturine and, or patronizing, or then you had like Steven Universe being like completely dunce, like bad with his writing, and see like Rick and Morty actually doing similar things to Kids Next Door, but doing it a more adult thing, but for, for adults, so it's like okay, we want to we want to like the show, and it, it's still a good show. So anyway, so like if there's anything I'd want out of this video, I kind of would. It would be like sequel take, series. Yeah, that's basically it. I think like if I were to get if I want anything out of the purpose of making this video is to allow like Mr. Warburn to finish the show, like yeah. the Galactic Kids. And give it, anything. give it the ending it needs. Like, I don't want money, I don't want, like, I don't want, like, re-airings, I just want the show to have... Like, a, with, Sam, uh, like with Samurai Jack. A proper people conclusion. Didn't, people wanted, even Chargosky wanted, they didn't care, he didn't care about the money. He wanted a proper finish to Samurai Jack. He wanted a proper conclusion to that show. And we got it. And I hope the same thing happens to Kids Next Door. Uh, I'm fin- going to be 30 by the time it happens. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, finishing up Grown Up, they storm, they storm the, the mansion... And they, you know, they managed to get the, 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 the baby maker. They turn, like, they turn the delightful children into, into babies. And then we get introduced to father. And father completely is like, oh, you made me angry. And then we get the fire and like the, the, the whole Satan-esque look to him. It was so dark. It just completely went from like mildly dark to complete, to, like incredibly dark. The moment he's introduced with you the fire right powers, away that he is the he main was, villain. he was the main villain. Like you knew right away. Like yeah, this guy means business, and that's and that's what and that was the big like the biggest thing to come out of so the introduction of the main villain. Yeah, it changed the shift of how the show was gonna go. So it, it's, how it was written, how it worked, everything. Everything that made Kids Next Door Kids Next Door started with this episode. They were not playing it safe anymore. They, they everything it changed was with this get one episode. Real. Yeah, and so I I had to give Grown Up the the respect it deserves of being my favorite episode because it literally changed how the show worked. It changed how cartoons work. It changed how it changed everything. It gave us a reason to care. It gave us a, it gave us a proper reason to care, and started the and started this big. Big narrative that start that stretched the entire show. That you know, cartoons nowadays are still trying to figure out. <laughs> Ask Warburton. Ask Warburton. <laughs> Ask Mr. Warburton. So that is our top five favorite Kids Next Door episodes. Ooh. I have two questions. One, you, the viewers, do you have a favorite episode of the show? And two, do you think we should do another one of these, like with Courage the Cowardly Dog? Oh, oh I, I gotta really watch that. It's pretty, that yeah, I uh, I love Courage Cowardly Dog. But that is this video. 
So leave a like to leave a like to this video. Try and get we. I want to try and get as many, many, many likes. Are you gonna try and tell? You're gonna let your Discord friends know about this? Sure. Join the dis. Join our Discord. Uh, leave a link. In, oh, I'm going back to my fan fiction stuff. Yeah. Uh, join our Discord. We'll, there'll be a link to it in the description. Please subscribe to the channel and click on that bell for notifications. This has been Dark Symphony 777 and Woohoo, Agent X. And we'll see you next time.